we have here a graph representing some curve and we're wanting to find the area under that curve between the points where uh, clock time t equals a and where clock time t equals b. So let's say the t equals a at this point, t equals b at this point. We want to find the area here. Now there are two things that we could do uh, other than what we've already done. Now in, in, in making approximations we've often used trapezoids. What we're going to do this time is uh, we're going to follow a more standard procedure for at least proving what happens with the derivative, uh, if not for doing approximations. Trapezoids are more valid for approximations than this step, or at least more efficient. But we're going to say, okay, uh, this function is in the first place increasing. Now that's going to be important. We're going to just kind of restrict our attention to increasing functions. Now we could extend this to decreasing functions into functions which both increase and decrease. But the point is if the function is increasing, we note that the if we divide the region between A and B into a bunch of trapezoids, now here I've divided it into only four trapezoids, but I haven't specified anything about this middle trapezoid here, uh, and actually shouldn't have specified anything about either of the middle trapezoids. Um, but we imagine dividing this thing into a great number of trapezoids anyhow. Now, for each trapezoid, there's a left-hand height and a right-hand height. The left-hand height is too low to give us the correct area, and the right-hand height is too high. So for this trapezoid, the left-hand height comes up to here, and we have this rectangle bounded by the red line. For the right-hand altitude, we have this rectangle bounded by the green segments here, and the rest of the trapezoid. And one is clearly too low and the other is clearly too high. A little bit of notation. We're going to say t runs from some t0, the original time or the zero time, up to some time t sub n, where n is the number of trapezoids that we have. In this case n would be 4 and we'd say t4 equals b, t0 equals a. If we assume equal intervals here, uh, then we have T0, T1, and then we have an unspecified number of trapezoids or of, of, of uh, uh, intervals between here and here. And just before we get to the end, Tn, we have a Tn minus 1. Those are going to be our important points. If we take a left-hand approximation, that is using the altitude of each triangle, uh, of, of each trapezoid essentially, at its left-handed point, then we're going to see that the total area is going to be, uh, okay, this says f of t0, that's the altitude at the left-hand side, this is f of t1, this should actually read f of ti and it does, but you can't really see it. It looks like another f of t1, and that's probably a little bit confusing, or was a little bit confusing. You can kind of ignore that anyhow. Um, the area of this first rectangle up to the red line, that's the left-handed approximation using the uh, altitude at the left, is going to be just the altitude, which is f of t0, times the width, which we'll call delta t, again assuming that all the widths are the same. Then the second triangle is going to have an altitude uh, at t equals t1 of f of t1. And if we use that for the altitude of the rectangle, then we get area f of t1 delta t. And that just continues until we get to the last interval. Now on the last interval, we're going to use the left-hand altitude, which is t, f of tn minus 1. We're not going to use f of tn, we're going to go up to f of tn minus 1 and multiply that by delta t. When we do the right-handed areas, we're going to have f of t1 delta t first because that's the right hand of the first trapezoid, and we're going to go all the way up to f of tn delta t. So make sure we understand that notation.